The film begins as a young university student, Chloe Steele, arrives at JFK Airport in New York. She calls her mother, Irene, from the lobby and informs her that she will be home soon. She then requests to talk with dad, but Irene replies that he's not at home currently. It is revealed that Chloe has come to New York for her father's birthday, hoping that the entire family can celebrate together. But her pilot dad, Rayford, has been called to London all of a sudden. Disappointed by the news, she asks her mother to check which flight he'll be on. Irene then tells her the flight number, and Chloe realizes that the plane will be leaving from JFK Airport. Thus, she decides to wait in the lounge, hoping that she can have a chat with her father before he flies off. As she's making her way to the lounge, Chloe sees a popular TV presenter, Cameron Williams, nearby. He is surrounded by a few people, one of whom is a middle-aged lady with a book in her hand, as he is a journalist who usually reports from the front line of several disasters. She asks him if he reads the Bible. Cameron guesses that she is a religious person and jokingly says that he does, but not as much as her. The lady smiles at his joke and tells him that Matthew 24, 7, a verse from the Bible, talks about how famines, disasters, and wars are all signs. But before she can finish her sentence, Chloe interrupts the conversation. She asks the lady that if God knew about all these bad things, why didn't he stop them from happening? The lady replies that God created Earth to be perfect, but it is the human's fault that it is now a mess, refusing to take this generalized statement as an answer. Chloe says that several innocent people who have done no wrong in their lives are also punished. She then points out the foolishness in believing that God loves all humans when he refuses to help them in times of war and famine. When the lady has no counter-argument to this, Chloe walks away, slightly embarrassed by her sudden rant. It is obvious that the young university student is an atheist. Outside, Captain Rayford arrives at the airport's parking area in his car. He sees a young stewardess, Hattie Durham, so he quickly takes off his marriage ring and walks towards her. Hattie has no idea that he's married, and there is obvious romantic tension between the two. They then enter the airport lounge together. Meanwhile, Cameron is quite impressed by Chloe's questioning of blind faith and religion. He approaches her at the airport's cafe and the two begin having a conversation. Cameron thanks her for saving him from the religious woman, referring to her as a nut job. But in response, Chloe points out that she was simply rehearsing for her mother, who is also a religious nut job. She then explains that she's waiting for someone, which makes Cameron assume that she has a boyfriend. This makes him a bit uncomfortable and he tries to back out of the conversation, but she reveals that she's actually waiting for her dad. Just then, she sees her father arrive at the lounge, walking close to a beautiful stewardess. Rayford also notices her and awkwardly tells Hattie that he will rejoin her soon. He then walks towards Chloe and the father-daughter duo hug each other. Soon afterwards, Rayford sees Cameron standing nearby and recognizes him as the famous TV presenter. He asks if the two are dating, but Chloe denies it. The journalist then excuses himself, saying he has some important business to handle. Following this, Chloe and Rayford sit down for a conversation. It is revealed that Rayford had no idea she was coming to New York. When Chloe expresses her desire to celebrate his birthday at home with the whole family together, he points out that it is too late to back out from the flight. The two then discuss Irene, who has become deeply religious these days. It turns out that both the father and daughter can't stand being preached to all the time. Irene's faith and continuous talk of religion has become so intrusive for the other family members that Chloe rarely comes home, while Rayford prefers to be as busy as possible. After a short conversation, Chloe asks why he was walking so close to the air hostess, but Rayford dismisses this topic and ensures her that everything is okay between him and her mother. He then hands her the keys to his car and says that he needs to board his flight. After this, he bids her goodbye and leaves to join Hattie, who has been desperately waiting for him. A few minutes later, Cameron once again approaches Chloe, who is still at the cafe. He asks if everything is alright, to which she expresses her disappointment that she couldn't spend time with her entire family. The two then briefly discuss religion and how people will still search for good things even in the darkest of times. Soon afterwards, Cameron gives Chloe his number and leaves as he too is flying to London. He is on the same flight that Captain Rayford will be piloting. In the next scene, Chloe arrives home and meets her mom and younger brother. They then engage in conversation, but mom swiftly changes the subjects to God. She explains how she prayed for Chloe to return and the Lord answered her prayers. But this only makes Chloe angry and she abruptly leaves from there. Her younger brother chases after her and the two decide to go to the mall. Elsewhere, Captain Rayford gets into the flight and immediately starts flirting with Hattie. You know, I've been told my penis is shaped just like this plane. With the time of departure drawing close, he makes his way into the cockpit where his co-pilot wishes him a happy birthday. On board the plane,
explain a height-challenged gentleman attempts to put his luggage in the overhead storage compartment. A Middle Eastern man gets up and offers to help him, but the shorter gentleman begins yelling back. He points out that just because he's short doesn't mean he needs unsolicited help. Just because I'm an Oompa Loompa doesn't mean I know how to make chocolate, you bitch. Shortly thereafter, the flight takes off for London. Meanwhile, at the mall, Chloe tells her brother that she met Dad at the airport this morning. She lies that Rayford talked a lot about him and loves him dearly. She then hugs her brother, saying that he will be a great baseball player one day. But during this heartwarming moment, the boy suddenly vanishes into thin air. Only his clothes and bag remain, which inexplicably fall to the ground. A confused Chloe looks around and sees that the same thing has happened to all the kids and some adults in the mall. The scene then shifts to the plane, where exactly the same thing has transpired. All the kids are gone, and some adults, including the co-pilot, have vanished, leaving their clothes behind. This horrifies the passengers, and some men rush to the pilot's room for answers. But Rayford turns up the pressure in the cabin and drops down the oxygen masks. This forces everyone to get back to their seats immediately. Now that he's the only pilot on the plane, Rayford tells everyone to buckle up and put on their oxygen masks. He then attempts to radio the control tower for help, but is unable to reach anyone. Although he doesn't realize it yet, several people in the control tower have also vanished without a trace. He pulls out his cell phone and tries calling home, but no one answers. Back at the mall, Chloe is frantically searching for her brother. As she's observing his clothes, a car with no driver suddenly crashes through the front window. This causes absolute chaos inside the mall, and to make matters worse, looters begin stealing money from the people who have vanished. After a while, a confused Chloe dodges the increasingly hostile atmosphere and gets out to the parking lot, but even here the situation appears to be the same, as hordes of people are seeking their lost ones. Just as Chloe proceeds towards her dad's car, a small plane crashes into it. Terrified, she runs down the street, where she notices a school bus crashing right in front of her. Chloe rushes to help, but realizes that the bus is empty. It's shocking that this movie came out the same year as The Leftovers. Inside the plane, Rayford normalizes the pressure when everyone is back on their seats. The passengers then take off their oxygen masks and start arguing about what might have happened to the others. Theories of alien abduction, wormholes, and that passengers just being invisible are offered up. In the meantime, Chloe finally realizes that the entire city has fallen into chaos. Although she has no idea what has happened, she guesses her brother might have been taken to the nearby hospital. Thus, she runs to the local hospital and sneaks past all the chaos through the back door. To her horror, she finds out that the room where the newborn babies are kept is completely empty. A nurse then appears and tells her that every hospital in the country is experiencing the same phenomenon. This means that the entire child population of the world is probably gone. In the next scene, Rayford discovers his co-pilot had a watch that said John 316. He also finds that the other stewardess, who also vanished, had notes from Bible study in her notebook. This hits him with a sudden realization, and he remembers how his wife used to talk about a biblical event called the rapture. In this event, all the people who believed in God, along with kids who were too young to make a willful rejection of God, would vanish from earth and be brought to heaven. She was right. The rapture has happened, which is why all the believers have vanished while the non-believers remain back. Which is fine by Rayford. There's no booze or infidelity in heaven. Following this, Rayford attempts to come clean to Hattie about being married, but she does not take the news positively. In the passenger compartment, Cameron sees liquid flowing from one of the wings, and it soon catches on fire. Frightened, he rushes to the cockpit and reports this to Rayford. They realize it's a fuel leak, and they are in deep shit. Back in New York, Chloe walks into her mom's church for answers. She meets a pastor who explains that this is the rapture and that everyone who has vanished has gone to heaven. Furthermore, the non-believers who are now stuck on earth will have to face several years of darkness before being judged by God. This expectedly enrages Chloe, and she points out that the pastor himself is left behind, meaning he did not believe in the words he preached. Elsewhere in the plane, Rayford tells Cameron, who has now taken the co-pilot's seat, that the fire near the wing will extinguish sooner or later, but the leak will leave them with barely enough fuel to return back to New York. However, they have even bigger problems, as he hasn't been able to establish any contact with the control tower at JFK Airport. Desperate to get any news on his family, Rayford asks Cameron to call his daughter. To his surprise, the journalist reveals that he's been trying to do so since the last few hours. It is evident that he has fallen in love with Chloe. After a while, Rayford finally manages to contact someone at the control center, but the operator explains that the airport is full of wreckage, and he doesn't know where their plane will be able to land. Trying to come up with a 
solution. Rayford asks to establish contact with LaGuardia Airport, which is also in New York, but the radio operator reveals that all airports around the world are experiencing this bizarre and sudden chaos. This worries Rayford, and he realizes that the situation is more serious than he thought. How serious did he think it was? Nevertheless, he decides to head to JFK and try to somehow land the plane, as that is the safest option at this moment. Next, Cameron heads to the passenger compartment, where a woman is pointing a gun at numerous people, demanding that they explain what's happening. It is revealed that she is the wife of a famous football player, traveling with her young daughter, who vanished while she was asleep. Blinded by her fear, she accuses everyone of kidnapping her daughter. Thankfully, Cameron gets her to calm down and open up as to why she thinks everyone's conspiring against her. The lady eventually breaks down and reveals that her husband is a toxic person who frequently accuses her of trying to take their daughter away from him. Now, with the kid gone, she will have to face possible abuse from him. At this moment, another passenger, a woman with shades and marks of syringes on her arm, suddenly stands up. She talks about the biblical event called Rapture, where all the disappeared people are taken to heaven. However, she doesn't know anything other than that. Elsewhere, a worried Chloe fears that her father's plane may have also crashed. Since her mother and brother have also vanished, she sees no point in living anymore. Thus, she climbs to the top of the Manhattan Bridge and decides to jump. On the other hand, Cameron returns to the cockpit and takes his seat. He finally manages to reach Chloe, who's on the verge of doing something stupid. Fortunately, she stops when she sees the call and quickly picks it up. Chloe breaks down in tears and thanks him for calling just in the nick of time. Cameron then hands the phone to Rayford, who apologizes to his daughter and reveals that her mom was right. He then explains that the plane is running out of fuel and he doesn't know if they can land it safely. With renewed will to live, Chloe tells her dad that she will find space for the place to land. She quickly climbs down the bridge and gets to a construction site by the highway. Using a nearby pickup truck, she clears all the blockades on the spot so that he can have enough space to land the plane. She then calls Raymond, who instructs her to light the entrance to the landing strip so that he can see it from the plane. In a brilliant stroke of genius and also luck and a massive lack of logic. Chloe uses fuel from a crashed petroleum tanker and lights a huge fire. This is enough for Rayford to see the construction site strip, and he expertly glides the plane towards it. Despite a tumultuous slide that destroys the landing gear, the plane comes to a halt safely. In the final scene, the passengers come off the plane, and one of them exclaims that the worst is behind them. However, Chloe says that their troubles have just begun as she holds her father tightly. We're alive. Yes, yeah, sweetie, but we're also doomed to hell.